Hi folks, Canadian Prepper here. So today we're going to be taking a look at the thermoelectric generator called the Flame Store. So let's get into it. Check out Vincent Von Doom's Disaster Survival Network website and YouTube channel. Informative and empowering talk radio for survivalists and preppers. So using the flame store is quite simple. We're going to convert heat into electricity. So you have your flame store that's all set up, takes two seconds out of the box, very self-explanatory. You stick the blade over said radiant heat source, pour water into the reservoir, which is going to cool one side of the conductor, which is going to help us generate electricity. Turn it on. You shouldn't do this in the house, but when you're on YouTube, anything goes. That red light means that electricity is now being produced, and so you can plug in your USB devices. So typically I don't do negative reviews on the channel. There's the common belief amongst gear reviewers that if something doesn't work well that you shouldn't talk about it at all. But uh, I do appreciate startups, and I do appreciate innovation. And I applaud any sort of creativity, even if it is a complete blunder. And I don't think that the flame store is that. I think it has some potential, it has some utility, but I think it has a long way to go. But when you know how thermoelectric systems work and how complicated it is to actually harvest that energy, which is um, lost in combustion, the heat energy, then you can appreciate what they're trying to do here. And I actually still do appreciate it more than the BioLite for reasons that I will get into. But I'm just going to briefly explain how thermoelectric systems work. I'm by no means an expert in this area. There are many YouTubers who specialize in renewable energy sources and how they work. And I'm going to post some links to some very short, succinct, and to the point videos explaining how thermoelectric generators work. So essentially what they do is they produce energy by exploiting the hot cold differential. So it's kind of like how a high and low pressure system interact in order to produce wind. So basically the higher temperature difference between the hot and the cold part of whatever sort of metal they're using to conduct this electricity, uh, that's going to determine the amount of electricity that's being generated. So it's that hot cold differential that which makes all the difference. So it's not so much how hot you can get one side of the semiconductor. It's as much ado with how fast the heat dissipates as it is how, how hot it is. So the difference between the hot and cold creates a certain flow of electrons which generates a very small amount of power. Now thermoelectric generators have always been limited. There's a lot of heat lost in any power generation facility. Typically uh, the steam generators, a lot of that heat is lost. So there's been a lot of work that has gone into trying to figure out how they can harvest some of that lost energy. So hence the importance of thermoelectric generators. Now they're not nearly as efficient and you're not going to get as much bang for your buck as you would like some passive systems and what passive energy systems are, are things like solar, wind, uh, hydro, and then you have your more active systems which are kind of the mechanical crank type systems which require constant attention. This one kind of falls in between and it really does depend on how you're using it. If you're using a fire that utilizes natural fuels like wood and sticks and stuff like that where you're constantly having to fuel the fire, well then it is more of an active process. But if you're using something uh, you know, that uses propane or some kind of uh, fuel source which burns on its own, then that energy is being lost anyway. So I guess the idea here is that you can harvest at least a portion of that energy. And I do say a very small portion because you're only going to be getting back a very small amount. But uh, some of that heat that's gone to waste can be captured and converted into electrical energy. So the BioLite is something that I've always been skeptical of uh, in terms of emergency preparedness. I think it would be, you know, it'd be nifty for 
like a camping trip on the weekend but as preppers you know we we expect a little bit more than that we want something that's going to last a bit longer a bit more rugged i think it's very convenient i mean you can use it to heat small areas you can use it of course to cook and of course you can use it to generate electricity but i think that the store has it beat in some respects in terms of its versatility with respect to where it's used for one it's not bound to the biolite as the biolite is so the biolite energy generation system can only be used with the biolite which for some people is sufficient because that's all they would ever use but the thing i like about the flame store is that you could use it in a fire you know you could use it uh, they say you could use it over a candle but i think that the amount of energy that you're going to generate with just a candle is going to be almost negligible it's not even going to be worth doing but they say you can use it for that basically any place that gets hot you know whether it's um i mean you could probably even use some sort of parabolic lenses or mirrors if you wanted to uh, to generate electricity with this thing if you could just get uh, that one part of the conductor hot enough uh, it could possibly work but mostly you're going to be using this with camp stoves the thing with the flame store it's far more agile in terms of how you can set it up as you can see here there's just a variety of different configurations that you can uh, put the flame store into and so depending on the nature of your heat source you would be able to work around that all right so i'm just going to quickly go over the pros of the flame store so the flame store produces a bit more energy than the biolite it claims that it can produce up to three watts so the store is definitely more lightweight than the biolite i believe it's about 10 ounces has a very slim form factor when packed down of course it can be used in a variety of different places unlike the biolite so on a campfire any sort of hot surface basically parabolic mirrors you know whatever you want to do with that the stove a propane stove could even be used with some sort of candle but any heat source essentially the flame store is going to be able to work with so long as it's hot enough and that hot cold differential is significant enough to produce electricity now it is more reliable than solar wind unless it's raining of course so crank of course is the most versatile meaning that it can be used in any situation but of course with crank the downside is that there is sound with the flame store you do require a heat source so once again if it's raining it's not going to work but it is better in that it can run at nighttime and it doesn't require wind or any sort of running water so that's one of the bonuses of that and i think the main selling point here is that it captures energy that's lost anyways so so if you feel that the energy you're going to lose from the exothermic effect of you know combustion when you're cooking your food if you feel as though it's worth harvesting some of that a very small fraction of course then you know take the flame store along with you uh, whether it's worth its weight in terms of the energy that you lose is debatable i suppose it depends on how much energy you're planning on using so that's something to take into consideration for a long-term trip and if you had a constant fire burning particularly in winter where the hot cold differential may be more pronounced then indeed the flame store may be a uh, good option for people who are you know burning lots of fuel in cold climates now the cons of the flame store are pretty obvious i think obviously the power output is still very low even if it can achieve the full three watts that it reports it still is a very insignificant amount so at best you're going to get a trickle charge on even the smallest of smartphones it's also very awkward in the design i mean the water requires a sturdy flat surface and you know just because you have to put water in there which is eventually going to boil away so it does require water uh, it doesn't have to be fresh water or anything like that it could be whatever kind of water i suppose but uh it is kind of a balancing act and it is a little awkward uh, to say the least to have to balance that water on there it's not very sturdy surprisingly i mean it has the agility but i still think there could be improvements in terms of you know um, how sturdy it is i think they could really improve on that aspect of the design a lot uh, the high price i think it retails between 75 and 120 dollars depending on which country you're in and 
you know what store you buy it from so i think the price isn't justified at this point especially for the three watts now if they could get it to a solid five watts in the same form factor in the same weight class and you know then now you're talking you know 80 to 100 dollars that would make sense to me but uh, right now it just doesn't seem worth it it's more of a novelty item at this point uh, there is no carrying case which is kind of ridiculous considering there's so many pointy edges on the thing and there's so many you know like the cord flops off and so you'll see here uh, the, the part where they expect you to wrap the cord around kind of cuts at the cord a bit so it's you know in that respect it's it's problematic i i can't uh, i really don't understand why they wouldn't have thrown a case in there it would have been a very small uh, feature to add and of course it requires fuel so unlike other renewable energy sources this does require fuel to be used granted it does use fuel that was going to be used anyways and lost nonetheless it requires fuel to generate so if you don't have any fuel you're not getting any electricity unlike wind water or sun or crank where you could just either generate the electricity yourself or get it from a uh, passive source you know it's going to require fuel so that's another con so all in all i give props to the company for one sending me out a unit to test out and entrusting in me to do a fair review which i think i've done i do think that you know there is a place for the flame store like i say uh, depending on the climate you live in and what your needs are if you're using a lot of fuel on your expeditions or whatnot then this could be a good um, alternative but if you're living in a place and here's the irony so if you live in a place like say on the west coast where there's a lot of sun there's probably going to be a lot of rain that means so if there's a lot of rain chances are you're not going to have a lot of fuel to burn or else it's going to be very wet so that's kind of the paradox there with this is to some degree anyways that uh, it's very hard to find the ideal climate for it i would say a wintry climate where you had a lot of natural fuel at your disposal so i'm going to be generous here and give the flame store a six out of ten because I like the innovation and I think the company has a good future ahead of it if they can just dial this in a bit more. I think it was a bit premature in how it's been put out here. It's very easy for us to judge a, a startup, you know, um, and for us to go and scrutinize it and criticize every aspect of it. But it's very hard to get a business going. And I respect that they, you know, took the initiative to do this and charted a new territory for uh, other companies perhaps and hopefully themselves to fine-tune and enhance this product that they've brought to the market so i look forward to seeing more from flame store in the future if you have any questions about the device please feel free to ask if you'd like more in-depth demonstrations i might be able to oblige but i just have a lot of projects on the go right now so please like comment subscribe to the video and if you are interested in the Flame Store, uh, even after this critical review, I will post a link and you can uh, pick yourself one up. Thanks for watching. Canadian Prepper out. Check out the Canadian Preppers Network blog, an excellent resource for survivalists and preppers.